back to this. Hello there, everyone. I kind of wanted to do a little unboxing video. I subscribe to the Paradise Fibers um, subscription fiber of the month box. And I just got my September box and I kind of wanted to open it with you all you guys. Scissors. So actually it's funny because I just opened my August box yesterday because I was planning on doing one of these with you guys and then I got the September one and I'm just like, hmm, I should just do the September one and I opened my August one yesterday. Ooh. Ooh. It is a hot pink and a very bright yellow. Sunset on Summer. Oh. Flax Top. Oh. Oh, wait a second. So one is flax and one is silk. Uh, three ounces of each. So this one is silk. Mulberry silk. And uh, the hot pink one is flax. Wow, the staple length of flax can be up to 22 inches long. That's pretty crazy. All right, let's look at what else I got. I probably won't be spending those anytime soon. Oh, it's got a little see through panel. I got No Bad Vibes, little Paradise Fiber sticker, put it in my collection, and a little boba tea charm on like a rainbow bracelet thing, I guess. I guess I could put all my charms on here now, actually. Because here is my collection of Paradise Fibers charms. There's a lot on there. So I guess I could start putting them on this little ring instead, instead of this tiny little ring. That's pretty cool. And of course, little stash tea of super mint. I have just been saving all these teas. I haven't drank any of them. Anyway, that's pretty cool. But one thing I did want to add to this video, I did want to do some fiber dyeing because there is a few people that had requested or they were curious about how fiber gets dyed and like the steps in doing that. So I think we're going to add that in here right now. And I'm going to move you guys over to the sink and show you guys how I start for dyeing my fiber. Okay, so here over at my sink, I have just a regular bowl that I only use for dyeing. I'm going to put lukewarm water in. And not too full. And I'm gonna dye this is the fiber that I got from Paradise Fibers um, for the August box. And I'll show you how I wrap it. So this is a merino and Tessa silk blend. It's very, very soft and fluffy. Um, so you kind of find you find the end. So they're roving is very, very wide, but I'm just gonna try and keep it as thin as possible and just loosely ball it from the ball that it came in because that's balled differently. You kinda wanna ball it like you're winding off yarn, but very, very loosely and gently. Just 
gonna drop this on the floor. I know I'm totally dressed for dying right now, but I'll put on my apron here in a second. Okay, so you've got your very loosely um, rolled up ball of fiber. I'm gonna put on my gloves. These are gloves that I specifically use just for dyeing yarn and fiber. So grab your little ball. Let's see if I can get you guys closer here. Actually, with that, bring the bowl up so you guys can see. So what you want to do is you'll want to gently start submerging the fiber and you can just kind of gently press so that it starts absorbing the water. see the bubbles are coming out now kind of try and squish out all the air gently because <laughs> this uh, I'm pretty sure this isn't super wash so it will felt if you're not careful so obviously there's still a bunch of air in here So just kind of keep pushing out as much of that air as you can very, very gently so that it really just absorbs all of that water. At this point, you could put in your acid, um, but because this is roving, I, I don't want to soak my wool in acid before putting the dye in because I want it to have um, a chance to spread before striking because then you can get really big chunks of white like deeper in the roving and if I want a consistent all the way sorry if I want a consistent all the way through the middle of the roving then I need to um, not put acid in first so that it has a chance to get all the way through the middle. Pressing out all that extra air. So we're gonna let this soak for about 20 minutes. Uh, maybe like 15. 15 to 20 minutes, just to make sure it's all um, saturated. And I will, See you guys back here in just a little bit. Hey guys, so while we're waiting for our fiber to soak to be dyed, I figured I would start um, letting you guys know how I prep my fiber before I spin it. So this will be kind of like the first introductory episode of um, this spinning um, together with me on this one. I think maybe I need it a little bit higher. There we go. It was kind of cutting off my head a little bit. We don't need another incident of episode eight. Take million. Okay, so this is my hand dyed braid of fiber that I had dyed up in kind of a gradient. And I just put it in a braid, so it's pretty much just a slip knot kind of going all the way up, or a chain, crochet chain going all the way up the braid. So I'm just gonna start popping this off here and let it kind of fall to the floor all the way to the end and then so the what I do to get the most consistent spin because um, I think what I want to do with this is to try to spin for socks so I need a pretty fine spin for if I'm gonna do a three ply or a two ply I haven't decided yet. So I'm just gonna start splitting my fiber. So I split my fiber lengthwise and it gives it a nice fractal spin, um, which means that all of the color changes mix very nicely and it gives like barbapolled 
effect instead of more of a gradient like how it's dyed. Um, but I really enjoy um, fractal spinning. I think it's really pretty and it gives it a nice, because it even, it still kind of gives it kind of a flow of color. I have um, Trish from Fiber Love Diary on the background. Okay, so it just kind of, the fiber will naturally kind of split for you. So you kind of just want to follow one of those lines and gently split it down all the way to the end. There we go. So you can also kind of like fluff out your fiber before doing this because otherwise you do get a little bit of a hiccup sometimes or where it starts pulling in the middle. Or you have slightly felted bits from, you know, overworking the fiber when dying. Because that can happen, but it's nothing, it's not like, oh my god, I can't work with this felted. It's just, um, gotta maneuver it and fluff it out a little bit more. Oh, this is really, it's not felted, it's just... struggling a bit. There we go. Now it's splitting really nice. There's my first section. So what I'll do is I'll take the dark end and just kind of make little bird's nests out of each little section that I peel off. Like that. So I'll continue doing that throughout the whole braid. I'll speed this part up. Actually, uh, yeah, no, I'll speed it up uh, manually, not in time lapse, but. All right, let's get to the next section here that I've already kind of pulled apart. Take a purple section, start rolling it up. Some sections will be a little bit bigger than others, just how it splits. Um, but you can always kind of control. You have better control of your spin the smaller the section is. So, so now that's like an even finer section, which will give me a nice, nice control over how finely I spin. And since I'm going to be spinning this on my manual wheel, my Ashford Joy, which I called CC, um, my spinning won't be as consistent as if I was spinning it on my Ashford um, e-spinner that I have behind me, that one. I don't know why, I think it's just because the human element of treadling, you can't always treadle very consistently unless you're a robot, and then good for you. Just keep going here. All right, I'm gonna finish splitting all this and you guys don't have to listen to me anymore. trick that you can do um, when separating or when you start spinning from after you've done separating all of your little sections here that is really small I don't think I need that small um, after you're done separating all your sections of your roving 
Um, you can spin from, spin from end to end. So, which if you want like larger color repeats, um, which I probably won't do because I really want a very consistent fractal spin. Uh, so if you're spinning from this end and you spin all the way down and then when you get to the gray end, you would pick up another one that has gray from the inside and then you start spinning from the gray side and then go all the way to purple and then you start purple to gray, gray to purple and all like that. And then that would give you longer color repeats and possibly your colors would align a little bit more. However, the last time I did that, it ended up being, it was, I think I have it right here, actually. Hold, please. It ended up doing this, where it became very self-striping, actually. So there's like big color, big section of green, big section of purple, big section of green, big section of yellow, then green, then purple, and then yellow. So it was very interesting how that worked out. I, that means I was being very, very consistent when I was spinning this, but I was, I was hoping for a more like blended, but it wasn't as blended. Okay. Keep going. Okay. So I usually like to have an even amount of um, nests to spin. And like, I'll go through and I'll be like, oh, this one's like really thick or this one's really small, oh, but they're actually all pretty even, but I need, oh, just one more and it makes eight. Perfect. Although this one's gonna be pretty big. I kinda wanna split this one, but that is okay. All right, this is my eighth little stack. And that's how I start splitting my fiber to prep to spin um, so I can get a very consistent yarn. Back to the soaking. Okay, now that our fiber has been soaking for about 15 minutes and it looks fairly um, saturated, which is good which means that the dye will be able to penetrate deeper into the roving. I'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit, make sure all those air bubbles are good, and slowly let it start soaking up the water more. Perfect. So here, you wanna lift up your roving from the water, gently press out any excess but not too much because you kind of want it to assist with the dye spreading. Okay, I'd say that's a good amount. There's still quite a bit of water left. I will use this to mix dyes um, so we don't waste water. Keep that here. Move you over here to our lovely dye area. loud noises. So this is my um, chafing dish or hotel pan that I bought off Amazon. Um, let's see, you kind of want to loosen your fiber up a little bit, try and find the end. Ah, here is my, my end right here. And you want to arrange it in kind of like a zigzag. So you would arrange it in a zigzag if you want um, to do more of like a gradient. Um, you can arrange it up and down uh, if you want more like short bursts of color sections, which could be really cool. What do we want to do? Let's, let's just do kind of like a gradient. Actually, I have an idea. I, I want to dye fiber in the colorway that I did for the giveaway. I think that would be really cool for the that one time at karaoke. I think that would be really funny. All right, so we will arrange in a zigzag motion, gently unraveling our fiber ball. So 
sorry if there's like extra noise. I have the dishwasher running. Oh, what's up? What did you need? The cookie dough bites? No. Yes? No. Okay, sorry for the interruption. The husband needed his pepperoni fix. Okay, so you just kind of keep doing the zigzaggy motion here with your fiber. And you kind of, you don't want it to be very twisted because that can cause resists in your fiber so it won't absorb the dye as much as you want it to. So just be weary of that. So you kind of want it as, almost as flat as possible. Okay, so let's spread this out a little bit here. Okay, let me give you guys a little sneaky, sneaky peek here. So it's nice and zigzaggied across the bottom. Just slowly gonna lower you down. I'm going to add just like a splash or so of the uh, soaking water over the top so that we kind of have a baseline of liquid here. And it kind of spreads out the fiber a little bit more. <gasps> I'll show that a little bit. See, spread out a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up some dyes and I will be right back. Okay, I've got my dyes all prepped right here and I'm arrange them in color order of what I'm going to be starting from the back to the front and then I'm going to be putting speckles on it as well. So let's get dying. I'm going to put you guys in a different position so you guys can see what I'm doing. Hold the phone. Okay, so I've situated you guys so that you guys can see kind of what I'm doing here. I'm going to start with the first color. Before I put on the heat at all, I'm just going to start putting in the colors. And then, let me get my other tools here. These are dye only tools. I do not use them for food at all. So I just want to press the dye in to kind of spread it. Hopefully it gets through the middle. Just move it around. See there's white patches right there. little more in the places that I know need it. Okay, that's it for the first color. I did not measure out the amount of dye that I used because I just kind of a go with the flow kind of person. And yeah. <laughs> So another reason why I do not turn on the heat yet, because I don't want, uh, when you add heat while you're doing this, the, and you're agitating or you're moving it around, the more chances it's going to felt on you and you do not want that. So it's best to kind of start cold and then work your way up. So I'm just gonna press with my hand here, check underneath. Oh, it's getting, oh God, I just splurked right on me. Oh, and I said I was gonna put on my apron and I did not. Smart, breeze, smart. Okay, so that was the first color. 
and then I am going to put on the rest and uh, probably put this on a time lapse. Okay, so I have added all of the dye that I'm going to add and I've checked underneath. I've speckled on my extra color here. And now I am going to spray it down with citric acid. So I have a spray bottle here that I filled with um, a, citric acid, a citric acid solution. You could also use regular house white vinegar. That works great. Some people are very sensitive to the smell. I'm not, I actually really like vinegar, but if you are sensitive to the smell of vinegar, citric acid does the trick. And that's what I have here just in this sort of solution. I need to wash it out, but I'm just gonna spray it on. So this will provide me the acid. There we go. Necessary to set the dye. So I'm just gonna kind of spray around the edges for that excess dye that kind of got splurked. So it'll soak down. Okay, I think that's, that is probably approximately two tablespoons worth of citric acid spray. I am now going to turn on the heat. Very like, if you have number heat dials, I would say like a around a three, medium, low, you want. And then I'm going to let this um, come up to room, or come up on the heat. And I might just let you guys uh, switch this over to the um, time lapse and have you guys watch it come up to temperature. <laughs> Okay, so now that you guys have seen it all come up to temperature, I'm just checking. It's clearly not cleared, <laughs> clearly not cleared, but I'm just checking to see if there's any little white patches that I need to like open up. And it looks like it's pretty well spread through, which I am very happy with. Uh, maybe a little bit there, but, so I don't want it to go too, hot it seems like it's getting a little too hot right now so i'm going to just turn it down to like low low and i'm going to now cover it with the lid oh perfect timing wow i'm going to cover it with the lid let it do its thing it's on super low right now and then um come back and check on it in about 20 minutes again and then I will turn it off and let it cool completely overnight and do not touch it because while it's hot it has a very very high likelihood of felting so you don't want to do that all right I will see you guys in just a little bit okay so you know what I remembered guys I want to test dye this um yarn that I spun with that uh, roving that I had 
made with a, a silk a blend of Rambouillet Targi Cross. And then I plied it with that um, sparkly yarn. No, uh, focus, focus maybe. Or sparkly um, thread. So I'm going to um, put this in the pot with the with the roving to kind of soak up the excess excess dye because I think I put a little too much dye. So I'm just going to put it in dry. I'm just going to lay it on top and then I'm going to use my little tool here and just kind of press it in. I mean, the likelihood of it actually <laughs> soaking up is kind of slim here and there's not really much blue left, which is a good thing. Good sign, good sign. Which means that it's clearing very nicely. I'll probably speed this up a little bit. another 20 minutes and I'll see you guys back soon. So it's been another 20 minutes. Uh, oh, look how pretty that is. Look how pretty that is. Ooh, me likey. Oh yeah, yeah, that's really pretty. Um, there is Still quite a bit of dye. Uh, not so much on the blue side. But I'm going to just turn it off. Oh, yeah, that's so pretty. I'm going to leave this in here as well. And I'm going to let it completely cool overnight. And we will check back in in the morning to see how well it cleared. I will see you guys soon. Well, it'll be a few seconds for you guys, but it'll be a whole sleepy time for me. Bye. Okay, so it's the next morning, or not really, it's actually evening the next day. And there's still a little bit of dye in there. But now what we need to do is we need to rinse it and let me take you over to the sink here. Let's start with the skein because it's actually the easiest to pull out first. So look how pretty that is. It's very like mermaid-ish kind of reminds me. I'm just gonna hang that up on the hook right there. Grab out the fiber. Okay. You definitely don't want to do any rubbing action. So I'm just gonna put in cold water. And 
then you gently, gently lay your fiber in there. You kind of just let it soak up some of the liquid and then press a little bit, let it soak up. So you just want to probably rinse just one more time and then I'll toss it through my spin dryer which kind of takes out any of the extra liquid and we'll probably, it, it might bleed but it doesn't seem like it's actually going to bleed after drying because it's just, it's very, very minimal um, dye that's coming out. down a little bit. Okay, this is looking really, really good. Oh goodness. Oh, I definitely want to be a little bit gentler <laughs> than I am right now. Okay. That, put it back in here, grab that, rinse off my gloves. Oh, that's the wrong. Okay, so I am going to bring you with me to my spin dryer. So that's it's not that much dye left in the pan. Bring you over here with my to my spin dryer, which is right here. Uh, uh, that's as tall as you're gonna get. <laughs> Hi. Okay. So I'm gonna put in. Yeah, I'm gonna put in my fiber first because I don't want it to try and get tangled up in the the yarn that I have. So I'm just gonna try and arrange it in kind of like a spiral ish. Or as evenly as possible. Throw this right on top here. Kind of in spiral motion. Put the little topper to keep it down and have it spin for five minutes. Actually, this is a good chance to okay. there we go sorry lighting is blocked but I do want to put in here that anytime I'm mixing up my acid dyes I do wear a respirator mask um, and gloves I do not allow anyone else in the area that I am prepping my dyes because um, these are this is the only respirator mask I have and I wipe down all the surfaces after I prep my dice for safety because PPEs are really important I keep looking at the wrong end it's this end this is the camera not this side this side okay I'll meet you back here in a second okay it's done spinning 
this out. Stay. So now it's spun out all of the excess liquid. It's actually just a little damp. It doesn't it doesn't feel like soaking wet anymore. That's why I love a spin dryer. So there's this. And then the Ruby. Okay, I will close that. Bring you guys right here. Tilt you guys down a little bit so you can see what I'm gonna be doing with the roving here. Straight that on the back. So what I like to do after I'm done spin drying, is I'll just go through and fluff it up. It looks like we got a really, really good um, saturation all the way through, which is amazing. Sorry if you can hear my neighbors being annoying. They're knocking on something. Oh, the joys of apartment life. Okay. So, just go through. And fluff. So this is kind of what I meant where your roving will automatically kind of want to just split in sections on you, which is if I were to spin this up, I would do that. I, just like I showed you on my other project that I will be spinning with you guys step by step. Wow, neighbors are really annoying. All right, I'm gonna speed this part up so you guys don't have to watch me fluff everything up. your fiber is all fluffed out, which will also assist in the drying process. Oh, look how fluffy. I'm gonna take you over here with me. Sorry. Okay. And what I do is I just kind of drape it over The yarn wall. I mean, I have a proper drying rack that I do not want to take it out. Because it is put away right now. So I will just leave it there, let it dry. Same with this, which is actually almost dry already. I'm going to just hook that on right there, let it dry overnight again, and um, I will show you what it looks like all puffed up and dry tomorrow. See you later. Hey guys, um, so it is now the next day as well, and I wanted to show you guys the finished um, dyed, dyed fiber braid. Well, it's not in a braid yet, but I wanted to show you guys how I braid my fiber anyway. So, it's right behind me. Oh, but first, this is how the other one died up. It's, I love it. I am going to be dying, or I am going to be buying more of this thread to ply with my yarn focus look how pretty that is and it didn't melt like I thought it was going to because it's polyester and it's still just as spongy and bouncy and awesome so I'm gonna be sending this little sample skein over to Anne 
who I bought the fiber from. Uh, not Anne. Amy. Amy. Sorry. I have... There's my friend Anne from my North Corner Knits. Yeah. And then there's the other Anne um, who watches me and Dix, which is, she's awesome too. So I'm just like, oh, it's an Anne. No, it's Amy. <laughs> Amy, who I bought the original fleece from, from to make the roving that I spun into yarn and then dyed. So I'm going to send this to her and I think she's going to be really happy about it. Okay. So on to the roving, what you guys want to know anyway. Sorry. It's like, it's really late now. <laughs> I had to redo my nails because they were getting, after I took a shower, it was like they were peeling off anyway. So I had to redo them. Now they're all like pinky. I was hoping they were not gonna be this pink, but they're, they're pretty pink. Pretty pink. Anyway, sorry, off topic. <laughs> so this is the fiber, you guys. It's really fluffy and really soft. It's really soft. Okay, so how I put it into a braid, since it's all been fluffed out, you just kind of put it kind of back into its roving form. And then you kind of start with like a slip knot. How do, how do I do this? Okay, so you kind of fold it over, go in, twist. Wait, wrong. Wrong way of twist. Going this way. Twist. And then you pick up and you kind of do like a little crochet chain. And then you keep pulling a little through. Okay, I'll kind of try and do that up close. So you have your loop. You pull down and then you grab more of the fiber, pull the loop back through. Literally a crochet chain if you do crochet, but or just keep pulling slip knots. So I'm just gonna, this is gonna be a really long braid. and really, really soft. I am definitely going to be spinning this. Sorry for all those people that maybe wanted to buy it in my shop. Uh, I could still buy the fiber and then dye it again. So let me know in the comments if you guys, if spinners are watching this and you're just like, oh, I'd really love to spin that too. Let me know and I will buy the fiber and dye it and put it in my shop and you guys can buy it. Really, really soft. Almost there. Well, I guess it wasn't that long. The end is really, really puffy. So then you have like just a little slip knot here at the end. And then you kind of just pull your braid out a little bit. And then you just roll with the braid portion sticking out because the other side is got the loopy bits on it. And then, oh my God. Oh my gosh. You guys. I, I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. This is so pretty. Wait, why is this? Yeah, why is this being weird? Okay. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. 
And then with the little end piece, I just kind of stick it in the braid. Kind of want to do it while it's sitting down a little bit so that you have the space in the room. But look at that. Look how pretty that is. Oh my God. Okay, so also comment below if you want to see me spin this up too. I'm going to do it anyway, but me likey, me likey a lot. <gasps> Look how pretty. And this is the fiber version of my colorway that one time at karaoke. <gasps> I love it. Okay. Enough of that. I hope you guys like this video. They just this is why we can't have nice things. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe, and I will be putting out more and more content like this in the future. Okay, I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>